guys. Um, so a famous Roman poet once said, men sana in corpore sano. And what this translates into is it's a healthy mind within a healthy body. Okay, so <clears throat> nowadays, um, everybody thinks that you can choose one pathway in life, um, whether to be a smart person or a strong person. And so back in ancient Rome, it wasn't like this. In ancient Rome, people believed that if you had a strong and a fit body, you would also have a strong and smart mind. <clears throat> and so this gets me to my presentation. Working out, is it for gains or is it for brains? And so we have a comic here. And this guy over here, man, he's jacked. Um, and this guy over here, um, he's pretty smart, but he's small. Um, so where do you work out? At the library. And it, it, this kind of shows what people think nowadays, that um, you can choose one way in life. When you start high school, are you going to join all the sporting events and focus on honing your body to be a crazy, legit athlete? Or are you going to be a nerd and do calculus homework every day and do like math homework and um, <clears throat> chemistry homework every day and be the smartest you can and let your body go to waste? Um, so what I'm getting is that there's a lot of scientific reasoning to why um, getting gains also gives you brains. And I'm here to talk about that. So let me tell you a little bit about a story of mine. So I started off in elementary school as a very overweight child. Um, now, you see, I didn't win the genetic lottery. I wasn't smart and I wasn't strong. And so that's kind of unfortunate. However, I... I grew a lot and now I'm standing here and I think I'm sort of strong and slightly strong, which is a huge improvement. And let me tell you about how I became this way. Um, so starting around in grade five, my parents are really tired of me. I'm sitting at home getting a 75% average, that's an Asian fail, and um, <laughs> not going to any sporting events. And so eventually they sent me to camp, but it wasn't any ordinary regular camp. It was um, Russian camp. Um, so what they did there is actually a boot camp, and um, they made me exercise every single day. Every single day I'd be running around in the forest with a shirtless Russian chasing me and telling me to go faster um, because I was lagging behind during their crazy hiking trips, which are, by the way, off the trail and on private property. Um, I'm not going to disclose the name of the camp because, you know, they might get sued. Um, but anyways, um, I was working out every day and I wasn't knowing it. And on top of that, the food was also really bad. Um, I remember seeing bugs in my food all the time and my Russian friends would trick me into saying more in Russian when I didn't want any more. And so to, to give you an idea on how that camp was, I didn't poop for a week. And this, this basically goes hand in hand because I was at a great caloric deficit and I lost a lot of weight. But after that, um, <clears throat> my experience and my experiences with that, uh, I grew as like a smarter person. Starting in grade eight, I really woke up. I hit a mental spurt. And all of a sudden, I jumped from a 75 average to high 80 average. And now all you guys know that it doesn't happen overnight. It was kind of like a gradual change. I kind of realized the world around me. And I kind of started working harder at my studies. And everything became more clear to me after that whole Russian camp experience. And so now let's talk about it scientifically. What actually happened to me during Russian camp? <laughs> so, oops. Um, okay, so your body's response to exercise. So your body is a machine, a, a living machine that's constantly in a sort of balance. And we call this balance equilibrium, or in biological terms, homeostasis. What homeostasis is, it's your body's way of balancing all its chemical reactions to make sure that you're standing here and alive and operating as you would normally do. And so when you start to exercise, you disrupt this equilibrium. All of a sudden, your muscles need to work a lot harder. All of a sudden, all your cells need more oxygen. And all of a sudden, your cells all need more, um, more calories, which is energy. And so short term, you're going to feel like shit. Um, so by this, like the people uh, who started working out just recently, I know there's, there's a bunch of you guys, Ima, Shirabi, um, I know Yasu too, oh you too too, good job. Um, so you're going to feel like shit and this is because your body can't compensate with all its new needs. Um, your body doesn't realize that it needs to repair its muscles all the way 
and it doesn't realize that it needs to produce more energy, more red blood cells to circulate oxygen through your body, and you start to feel really bad. However, your body always reaches equilibrium. It always reaches a state of homeostasis that makes sure that you operate the way you are without dying. And so, um, things that can happen from this is BDNF. And what this is, is brain-derived neurotropic factor. And wow, it's a, it's a really long word, but essentially what it does is it allows you to produce more neurons within your brain and your muscles. And neurons are cells that not only store information, but they also aid in the transfer of information. And the production of these neurons actually make you a smarter person, and you're able to recall um, more memories from the past and problem solve. And the increased red blood cells you get from working out actually increases your body's consumption of oxygen. More oxygen in your body to the cells means that your cells can work so much harder as they have more energy and eventually you'll become a smarter person. And so new blood vessels will also develop within your body and this also aids in our oxygen transfer and capacity. And all in all, it's all about neurostimulation. When somebody is working out, they're just not mindlessly lifting weights, oh I'm getting jacked, right? Um, what they're doing is they're really focusing on the mind and muscle connection. How muscles work is we have something called a motor unit. And what a motor unit is, it's a single neuron that connects to multiple muscle fibers. Whenever your brain sends a signal or a fire in this case, that motor unit contracts. And that's how you contract your muscles. When you're lifting weights, um, this motor unit kind of idea um, comes in play because you really have to focus on how many motor units you contract at a time. It's almost like playing an instrument. And all these factors um, actually improve um, your capacity of not only memory, um, but also learning. Um, since the healthier you are, the more information you're able to take and process. And so, physiologically, I've explained what happens. Um, let's talk about your behavior in response to exercise. Um, there's repeated studies that have shown an increase in not only um, your ability to focus on work, but also um, your productivity when you start working out and um, doing exercise. And how this works is there's a stress hormone called cortisol. Um, cortisol is highly catabolic, meaning it destroys things within your body. And in particular, um, you can see like right here, the red stuff, that's your uh, hippocampus. And um, <clears throat> its function is for a lot of uh, memory and um, different like abilities to learn um, within your brain. And so cortisol actually destroys that. And cortisol is what makes you feel depressed, makes you feel like, oh, I hate my life. And, um, stud, um, and exercising has actually shown to decrease levels of cortisol. And when cortisol decreases, your focus also increases and it preserves your hippocampus right here. And all in all, like, um, the, the third point is it boosts self-esteem. That doesn't really tie in with intelligence, but I kind of feel like um, if you're happy with the way you look, that's one thing out of your life that you're worried about and you can focus on different things. Like I always had um, kind of like an anxiety of like taking my shirt off in public because I would think, man, I have like no arms, like I'm small, and I kind of have like man boobs. So that was not worth. Um, but now, like, even though I still have man boobs and I don't think I've changed much, I'm confident that I've been like working out and I've made progress and I don't mind like taking off my shirt, but I will not do it in front of you guys. <laughs> okay, so um, your future too um, responds like to exercise. And so it's also shown that exercise um, decreases your risk for dementia, um, Alzheimer's, and reduces your risk for stroke, diabetes, and heart diseases. And so how this works, again, it plays in with cortisol. Um, exercise, it reduces cortisol levels that just tend to destroy your brain neurons. and also increases that um, protein that stimulates growth of neurons. And all of this actually um, protects your brain from different degenerative um, neuro diseases, such as Alzheimer's, and allows you to live a longer life. Now, the thing is with learning things is that Time is kind of like the limiting factor on how much you can learn. If you had infinite time, you can learn everything, right? And you see, it's kind of hard to believe that a lot of people, they forget about their health because they want to learn everything at once. However, if you were to maintain your health, you'd have so many more years of life to learn more things. 
and this is a given fact. Um, I believe um, working out and just exercising adds another 10 to 15 years to your life, and that's a lot. How can you get gains? Who here wants to get gains? All the guys should have their hands up. Who wants to be swole? Who wants to look like Aziz? You guys know Aziz? I have a picture of him later. Anyways, um, so, uh, girls, um, you want to be doing moderate um, exercises, aerobics, or you can um, weight lift. And so what this does is increases your body's ability to process oxygen and also to hold oxygen. And um, these also um, allow you to be a smarter person over time. Um, working out increases your metabolic rate, so you also lose fat in the process. Um, a lot of guys like to do a lot of weightlifting, and that's also really good in building muscle. Anytime you're at the gym breaking down your muscles, your body will be shifting its equilibrium in order to build those muscles back. And doing so, getting a gym membership is very, very important if you want to start working out. And then also sports. Um, and this is limited to a few sports that pertain to my presentation. Not all sports gives you gains and gives you brains. Many high-risk sports, such as wrestling, football, rugby, um, actually does the opposite. It makes you lose brains. And by this I mean because of the fact that they're so dangerous, you can get, get hit in the head and get a concussion. And even though your body's producing more of the protein that um, builds neurons, um, getting a concussion can seriously impact your intelligence. Um, it's been scientifically proven. But low-risk sports such as basketball, swimming, all, all great for um, exercise. But then again, depending on what you do, you have to do research specifically on the exercise um, you want to achieve. And so but I can give you three very important facts on how to get bear gains. And so, by the way, this is a picture of Aziz. Famous bodybuilder, but he took steroids. Um, okay, so number one, diet is a secret to success. I would rather skip a workout than skip a diet, right? And what this means is, again, your body is a living machine. What you put in your machine is how your machine will function. You want to put good stuff into your machine for your machine to function properly. You can't build muscle if you don't eat enough protein. Proteins are the building blocks of muscles. You need to make sure you eat enough protein. Um, you can't gain mass without eating calories. You can't be healthy eating in a caloric deficit. Your body's going to be taking nutrients it needs from your own body. You need to make sure that you put your diet as your number one priority. Skip a workout, eat a good meal. That's my number one tip. Number two, do not overtrain. Overtraining is the most common mistake beginners make at the gym. They think, oh my god, I'm going to get so swole, I'm going to get so jacked. And they run in and they do like 7 to 8 sets for like 20 reps of an exercise. And then they wake up in the morning and they're like, oh crap, I'm dead. And then they don't go to the gym for a month and then they repeat that process and they look skinny. And so you want your body to gradually change. Again, your body's at an equilibrium that makes sure that everything's functioning properly. You want to slowly disrupt this equilibrium so your body can slowly change. If all of a sudden you just tell your body, all right, I'm going to be an Olympic weightlifter, your body's obviously going to get injured. And this injury will really tax your um, ability to gain muscle um, or even fitness. And so third is train consistently. And I should have... Uh, highlighted the word consistently. There's many people um, who are not consistent with working out. And this is the number one um, important method of working out. It's not about um, working to your max, working to like fatigue. It's about consistency. There's many people who, um, they've been going to the gym longer than me and I can lift more than them. And why is that? It's because I've been consistent with my workouts. I go three to four times a week I don't overtrain myself, I just train until I'm sort of tired and I get out of the gym. And this consistency kind of tells your body, alright, this is my new lifestyle, I need to adjust to it. Any further, it would disrupt um, the equilibrium too much and you really wouldn't um, give your body a set message on what to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation. Um, if you have any questions, you can always ask me. And remember, 
everyone here should aspire to um, go into fitness, but don't overdo it. Overdoing anything is bad, and a good balance between study and fitness will aid in the best person. Thanks.